Hey, Madam Secretary, would you please do the roll call? I will. Thank you. Uh, Rachel Anger is here. Kathy Calhoun? Here. John Kalilla? Here. Uh, Kenny Curley? Here. Pam Delabar? Here. Kathy Dunham? Here. Marilee Griswold? No, Marilee. Uh, Yukiko Hayao. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, okay. Sorry, I'm here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, Yukiko Hayata. Here. Uh, Polly Hutanini. Here. Carol Krasnowski. Here. Rich Maston. Here. Ann Mathis. Here. Pam Moser. No Pam Moser. Uh, Daryl Newkirk. Here. Paula Noble. Wait, here. Here. I'll, sw I'll swing back around. Um, Michael Shelton. Here. Russell Webb. Here. Eileen Tartaglia. Here. Ed Raymond. Here. James Simbro. Here. Matthew Wong. Here. Uh, is Eva Chen on the call? Okay, I'm going to swing back around and uh, ask for Pam Moser. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, great. We have everyone uh, present for the meeting, and I will turn it back to you, Mr. President. Thank you, Rachel. Meeting is okay. called to order. Uh, hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to the CFA February 4th, 2024 Board of Directors meeting. <clears throat> um, before we go to our first agenda item, let's approve the orders of the day. Do we have any adjustments or additions? Okay, seeing no adjustments or additions, may I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. 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 Any Darryl. seconds? Okay, Daryl and Kenny, thank you. Any objections? Seeing no objection, motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Go right into breeds and standards. Annette, welcome back. Thank you. Okay. So the the I have two discussion items. The first one um, is the Kalmani, which is a, a breed we have in miscellaneous status. They're registered and they're shown in the miscellaneous class. Uh, we've had a you know a a number of them registered over the six years they've been, uh, since they were accepted. Uh, but there's been a, a real drop off in registrations with fewer than 10 registered in each of the last two years. Uh, there's also been a large drop off in the number of cat shows, particularly since 2020. Only four cats were shown. Um, and well, I think that should be region nine at several shows and one cat in regions one through seven. There was one uh, entered and shown at the 2023 CFA International Show. Uh, there are 14 category prefixes and suffixes. However, uh, there's no current members of the breed committee and there's no breed committee chair. Um, I have taught, I have brought this up before, not in this much detail maybe. Um, there is a, a cat club, but when I did my report, which admittedly I did several weeks early, um, the the Kalmani Cat Club was not in good standing at that time. Uh, they hadn't paid their uh, dues and nor had they submitted a, a membership list. So um, they're kind of in stasis, which is to me isn't a problem. You know, if if some do get shown, then um, uh, but there's no but there's no cheerleader for them. I guess is is what I'm saying, and I don't really know where to go. I have talked to someone that I know breeds them. They don't breed a lot of them. Uh, encouraged her to join the breed committee. Uh, we require after after the first couple of years after a breed has been accepted, um, the application for the breed committee requires that that anybody who who joins the committee show a cat in the previous year. Um, and while there have been a few registered, um, uh, nobody has actually shown them in CFA it, it, of the of the people that I've talked to. I've encouraged them. Uh, the lady in Florida that was a, a, uh, one of the uh, people that brought this, this breed to us has contacted me. What, what do I need to do? I have walked her through the process of what she needs to do. And, and then it doesn't go any further. 
So I, I don't, I'm just kind of bringing this up if anybody has any ideas, if anybody knows someone uh, that they could talk to about this, um, that would be great. I think we need someone to uh, get some interest going in this brief. Okay, thank you, Nat. Pam Delabar. Calman A Cat Club is and has been in good standing for at least the past week. It, it met all of its requirements. One of the reasons that the uh, showing and everything has fallen off was, of course, the death of Frederick Goder, who was one of the movers and shakers with the Calman A, especially in Region 9. Uh, several of the cats and kittens had to be placed, and to do so, we needed to get, once the death certificate was uh, issued, uh, then it took uh, the next of kin, who was uh, Frederick Godere's mother, to write a letter releasing um, the, uh, or giving authority for um, another uh, breeder to um, um, sign off on the cats. Several have been placed, and I think that one of our cheerleaders is going to be Dennis Gano. And um, I've talked to him and, and Mary Beth Trope, and we're going to see about uh, getting this going because this is a natural breed found in Thailand. It is, uh, um, of course, along with the, the Karat, <clears throat> uh, considered a, a very valuable asset to the Thais. So I don't want to see us drop it. I think, I think it's worth the time um, they are and can be very striking little cats. Um, I think it's worth the time for us to put in a little bit more emphasis. And I'm helping here in Region 9 as much as I can, because that's where most of the cats were, were uh, settled, 65 of them, as a matter of fact. But not all of those were Calmanets. They were uh, a mix of Karat and Calmanet. But uh, um, let us get regrouped. Um, this was a big loss, one to, to the breeding program of the Calmanes and also the Karats. Um, and um, there's a, <laughs> a lot of money that, that, that has been put out to try to, to place the cats, to keep the cats in good stead, because all, everything fell on Roman to get everything together. And um, it really wasn't a, a fair thing to happen to him, but he's stepped up and has done all the work. So, as I said, I think it's worth our, our while to to uh, help people uh, regroup and let's get this the Calmine back on track. Hey, Pam, thank you. Rachel, you had your hand up. Did you have some comments? Pam covered mine. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Annette? Yes, thank you. Um, I, I do appreciate the situation in Europe, and, and I know that's where uh, quite a few of the exhibited uh, Kalmani um, were shown in the, in the last year or two. And, and there's certainly no request to drop this breed. I, I, I'm not quite sure where that's coming from. What I'm looking for is we really need to see this breed um, committee with more than just one or two people. It, 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 it really was... Uh, Frederick and Roman were the only breed committee members for about the last three or four years. This is a Thai breed and we have some Thai breeders here. I don't know these people, but if someone does, maybe that's where we should be reaching out also. I don't think um, outside of regions one through nine, it's, it's, it's very popular necessarily, even region eight sometimes. They don't understand the, the reasons and purposes for joining a breed council or a breed committee. And, but I think we should encourage that. So if someone is going to Thailand, if there's some Kalmani at the show, or if they know any of these, these breeders that are listed here, um, maybe they could um, chat with them. Certainly, I'd be willing to help if, if, if you want to put someone in touch with me. I just don't, I just don't know these people or how to even contact them. Um, I have, talk, uh, I have uh, talked to Verona Blue, that's uh, the lady in uh, uh, Northern Kentucky. And while she, she seems to be interested, she also seems to want to defer to Mary Ellen. And, and I would love it if both of them would join the breed committee, but they need to sh show some cats. Now we could look at waiving that requirement right now. 
uh, and let them join the breed committee as if this were the first year of the breed. I, you know, I'm open to whatever we can do to to get some interest in this, some official interest in this uh, by the breed council. Mike? Yeah, I was just going to say um, some of the same things that Annette did, but we know these cats are being shown at fun shows in Thailand. So there are Thai breeders out there of these cats. And as Pam mentioned, these cats are a natural breed in Thailand. They've been around for a long time and they are considered a treasure. So I think that's part of the outreach we need to do is try and get some of our people who are in Thailand and might see these cats at non-CFA shows or do some kind of outreach there to try and get some of the Thai breeders interested, at least to try and get um, some people on a breed committee and try and get the interest going again. Pam Delabar. I'm leaving for Bangkok next Thursday. I've already made a note to to uh, make some contacts when I get there on Friday. Kathy Calhoun. Um, yes, I was going to add that I'll do whatever I can to to um, bring some names to the surface. We can talk to the area, uh, the country coordinator, to see if. He has some ideas, and Pam, uh, really appreciate whatever you can do while you're over there. Right. That? No, that's great. That would be great. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> and that, you can continue with your next item. Okay. My, the next item is... Um, Something that Lorraine Shelton brought to my attention a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. um, and, and and I'm not I'm not trying to. I, so basically, at the World Cat Congress meeting last June, uh, Leslie Lyons presented, and and I know we all heard about you know the, we were all excited about oh there's a test for the silver gene, but in fact, um, this report is now that it's out is kind of concerning. Um, basically. Um, she, she chairs the International Society of Animal Genetics um, and, and their report to the World Cat Congress um, basically has in their, and if you go down to the proposal section and these are just proposals um, and I don't know what might be on the agenda for the World Cat Congress this coming June. Um, the first proposal is to initiate mandatory mandatory genetic testing for registration to support disease eradication. Mm -hmm. uh, but then they say for cat breeds, the majority of DNA variants that cause diseases within a breed are of fairly low frequency. Uh, and, then, and then they go on to uh, what we could do about this. Um, so, you know, we, we talked yesterday uh, uh, in the exotic proposal about uh, recording um, uh, microchips and whether a cat is a, is a CPC or not, there's obviously a test for that and there has been. Um, but, but if this is the way that, that um, the World Cat Congress may want the registries that belong to it to go down the road, I think we need to think about how this might need to be expanded at some point. So that's one point. The second um, point here is retiring breeds this is towards the bottom of page, my page 78. Retire breeds in which the breed defining mutation causes health problems. Now, um, I think Mary Lee uh, alluded to this yesterday. Uh, breeders of Scottish Folds and Manx are talking about this. Um, basically, their recommendation is that these cats not be bred anymore. And, and I know we see this already in some countries in, in Europe where they are banning these breeds. And it really kind of goes beyond Scottish Fold and Manx. Um, you know, there's the issue of Sphinx and Devon Rex, you know, they don't have enough hair and do they have skin diseases and is that a problem? And it goes on and on. So while this is just opening a dialogue and discussion, it's a dialogue and discussion to the possible reduction and eventual elimination of these breeds from the cat fancy. That's gotten people's attention. So is there a concern that the World Cat Congress might jump on board with all of these things. And what does that mean to the registries that um, I have not even thought about 
banning the breeding or banning the breeds. I'm not sure how you could ban a Manx. They, they exist naturally on the Isle of Man. Um, so that's something we need to discuss. I don't know if this was in the World Cat Congress report from our delegate, because I, I just didn't have time to go hunt for what uh, board meeting minutes it was in. Um, and, and to be clear, this was actually an a, a ad, kind of an add-on, an add-on link to the actual minutes of the World Cat Congress. So that's what I have here. Rachel. Uh, thank you. And as last year's delegate, Kathy may want to expound on this, but when Dr. Lyons was uh, making her presentation to the World Cat Congress, which was lengthy, entertaining, and super informative, <clears throat> um, it was mostly on other topics. So this may have been, and uh, if I'm incorrect here, uh, I think this was kind of mentioned, but glossed over, and it was mentioned in the context of uh, a previous similar recommendation for another breed and the frustration that that breed did not um, take up her recommendation to retire the breed. So um, I, I think this is a, uh, you know, her ask, but uh, if, from the conversations I've had with uh uh, people that are affected by this happening, it's uh, uh, going to be strongly objected to. So, um, and she does come uh, to us with a, a a an offer of help for the problems in these the issues in these breeds. Um, so, you know, I think it's certainly worth some discussion to see more of what she has in mind. But um, the actual ask is. Uh, um, dramatic, dramatic. And that? Thank you. Um, Rachel, did, if I can ask Rachel directly, do you think, what, what was the feeling of the other members of the World Care Congress? If, if this comes to, a, um, a more, a more, more of an agenda item for action at the next World Care Congress, mm -hmm. how do you think the other registries will feel about this? Well, first, uh, just to let you know, we don't have the agenda yet, um, and the the meeting's coming up in March, so it should be released any day. Uh, second, Kathy may um, have a better memory than I do, but I don't recall this being discussed at all, except in passing. There okay. was no lengthy discussion, no um, uh, back and forth between the delegates, um, and that may have happened when I was out of the room or something, but mm. I, I don't recall that. And K Kathy has her hand up, so yeah. I'm, I'm sure she's got uh, additional <laughs> information there. Yeah, for some reason I can't. Yeah, my hand is is being Go ahead, difficult Kathy. to control. Uh, yeah, I, actually, as I recall, the 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 sense that I got from the other registries was just okay. This is interesting. Um, no comment. There was a lot of silence. There weren't a lot of questions. There weren't questions asked. It was just part of the presentation, a very small part, and there was dead silence in the room. Um, so I don't know how to read that. I don't think that um, there was any um, momentum behind it at the time. Um, I, I wonder if it might be a good idea to have some discussions directly with Leslie. Mike? Yeah, I just wanted to bring up this dovetails a little bit with what we heard during the legislative discussion yesterday, that this is an avenue that's being used by some groups to try and get in and further limit breeding of pedigree cats in general. And Manx and Folds are an obvious place to start, but we all know that there's other things being done, banning the breeding of white cats in general, things like that. So I think this is something we need to have some kind of preparation for in case it does come up. I just don't want us to get caught flat-footed if this does come up at the meeting again. Marilee? Yeah, I did um, 
a, I do a presentation on Scottish Folds that presents my paper, my published work. And I, also, I did a, uh, a CAT conference with Leslie um, where we did talk directly about this. So um, my research uh, was the first blinded controlled study ever done, uh, DNA tested, peer reviewed study ever done on folds ever. And it's, it remains so to this day. Um, and it shows that Scottish folds don't all have terrible crippling disease like all the previous um, all the previous studies showed. Her kind of take on that was that that's great, but um, they are still not being done very well um, around the world, uh, which I have to say is true. So around the world, people will breed fold to fold because the ears go up and they believe now they have a straight ear fold. They refuse to DNA test and they mm -hmm. are still making severely crippled cats all around the world. So I don't I, I don't really know how to respond to to her with regards to that. She's like, that's all fine that they can be done better. But the fact is they're not being done better. So, um, I, you know, there's, I, I would love to defend this breed that it, that it is healthy and can be done healthy. But on the other hand, I, I definitely see her point with regards to this. Kim Delabar. Most of the problem coming with the fold to folds over in this area is coming from Eastern Europe. And it's because people want to make money and sell. Um, back in the day, we had a fairly active uh, scientific advisory committee. And I know there has been great resistance in CFA to microchip our cats and to test our cats. Um, we were able to get a handle on PKD. Um, because of the uh, testing for PKD and people you know, working around and with, of course, unfortunately, some overreacted and put their cats down if they found out they were PKD positive. Others were able to smartly do some breeding and breed away from PKD. I would like to see our efforts with Leslie saying, we don't want to destroy the history of these breeds of cats. It's not, you know, we're the custodians of them. We're not their executioners. Uh, and to see what we can do on studies to breed away from the problems with spina bifida with the, the Manx or with the, the, uh, the uh, osteochondral uh, dysplasia with the, the, uh, the folds science has gotten to the point where we can do some genetic working like that. That's the, the tact I would like to see us take with Leslie. But on the other hand, we need to step up and start really promoting the health of our cats. CFA, if we know cats, then we know that cats need to be healthy. Um, in Europe, I cannot, uh, my, um, my cats cannot be used for breeding unless their hearts are checked. And I have to have, you know, the HCM check. And that's for Norwegian forest cats. We need to put this on the breed councils and say, what, what should you do? What, what, what testing can you do to help um, define and to identify healthy cats? We need to be proactive. And if we show we're proactive, that's part of the fight against such things as what's going on in um, New Hampshire. Now I'm going to tell you that part of the EU uh, proposals is a system called TRACES and it's an inter-operational uh, database that can um, track animals by microchip throughout all the countries. Right now it's just uh, 
track by country. And right now it's going to be able to track animals from country to country to country, no matter where they are. Um, I want us to, to be leaders, not reactors. Annette? Thank you. Um, I agree with Pam that that we need we, we need to give breeders some tools they can use. We can't be everything to all breeders, obviously. However, I think this idea of recording microchips, I mean, a cat can have multiple registration numbers over multiple regist registries, but generally they only have one microchip number. And, and I think that if we can give breeders at least the tool and the option to, to include a microchip number with the registration that is recorded, uh, it's at least a first step. And then if we have a way to somehow record genetic testing, whether it's for color or, or whatever, I think we need to look into that as an option also. I don't think we can, and I guess I hesitate to do more than give people tools and information um, because I think we could get ourselves in a real bind that way. But but I think that's a way we should move forward. And that's really all I have to say about this other than I'll be real interested in hearing um, uh, what happens at this next uh, meeting. Kathy Calhoun. <clears throat> Yeah, I, I think Pam and and that are uh, I agree with both. They are really onto something. And I wonder if we could hear from the central office as to what it would take to be able to implement uh, recording of microchip numbers and if there's genetic testing, record that information. Okay, Aline and James. Um, we can we can do that. I would suggest that uh, we meet and determine. Um, what we're going to do with this information, you know, what type of searches, what types of checks we would do for the microchip, um, exactly what type of information we want for the DNA. So we can do that. We would have to structure uh, the database appropriately. I would say that we're not going to do any of that until we release ECAT 2.0. And then once we have the new system up and running, it's going to be a, a much easier to implement future changes. James, you got any additional comments? No, Aline pretty much covered it. it that's a pretty straightforward uh, recording of data. Um, we're not doing anything crazy with it. At least it doesn't seem like it. It's, we're just recording data. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, thank you. Pam Delabar, are you willing to reach out to Leslie and have a conversation with her? I've known Leslie for years. I have no problems. Okay. If you would do that and let her know what our intentions are in helping these breeds, that would be great. <clears throat> and and I would like also to to uh, coordinate with uh, Mary Lee since she's an <laughs> active researcher. Um, but uh, yes, um, I will do so. Mary Lee? Yes, of course, Leslie knows me. <laughs> so, but um, but uh, I also have offered to the Manx Breed Council um, to help them to do genetic research. So right now they have found four different genes that cause taillessness. And there's some question that maybe one is better than the other. Maybe one has fewer problems than the others and that it would be uh, interesting science to know the, you know, which, if there is one that causes more, more health issues than others. And I'm more than willing to do that. I'm, I'm not sure I, I haven't had uh, a huge amount of interest so far from our CFA breed council with the Manx. Um, but I, you know, I can, can, you know, go through the same, um, researchers like with uh cat scan is who uh is who i worked with with my previous paper um you know if leslie if leslie is not interested or too busy or whatever so we can there's ways we can do further research um i just have to have the interest uh with the breed council or people who have manks i don't have manks so i I'm going to need them to do all the DNA testing and and uh, be willing to deal with the outcome. Pam Dolliver. We have quite a few Manx breeders in, in Finland, Merrily, 
And I think that they would be more than happy to um, uh, work with something like this. Okay, Annette, do you have anything further you want to discuss on this topic? Nope, that's all I have. Okay. I'm done. <laughs> You're done, done? Do you I'm have done, nothing done. else? Okay. Correct. Well, thank you very much, Annette. Does anybody thank have you, any Annette. questions for Annette before she leaves? Annette, see you, no questions. You're free to do whatever you want today. Back to the coffee. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rachel, do we have anything else for open session? I do not have uh, any notes for open session material to be dealt with. Okay, then we're going to adjourn the meeting.